Coming up on Extended Play, we take a walk down memory lane at the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas, and we slow down to hit the gritty streets of Manhattan in our review of Max Payne, and we see what happens when old games get a makeover. Stick around, it's game time. Welcome to Extended Play from the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Adam Sessler. Now, this is one of your best opportunities to catch up on some very old and rare video games. And just looking around, it reminds you that it wasn't all that long ago that controlling a cursor and a stick in a game of Pong was the height of gaming cool. Oh, yeah. Now, obviously, we've come a long way since then. But, you know, no matter how much you soup up the graphics and the sound, it's all about one thing. Fun. <laughs> In Las Vegas, classic gaming traditionally looks like this. But here at the Classic Gaming Expo, it looks more like this. Every year, hundreds of enthusiasts get together to immerse themselves in rather non-immersive games. While grooving to the beat of a saran wrap clad band called 8-Bit Weapon, fans perused some of their favorite old games. My favorite classic game is Mach 3. Joe. Reactor. Space Ace. Miss Pac-Man. Some came to compete. I have the world record for Gorb at 653,000 points, uh, but I have flipped a million on it, and I'm going to try to replicate that today. It's a very competitive environment, which is one of the benchmarks of old classic gaming. It's high score based, so it's highly competitive, and people are constantly trying to improve their skills. The holy grail of grails in video game playing, and this classic gaming, is getting the first million points on Ms. Pac-Man. And then when someone starts getting close to one of these incredible benchmarks, the rest of the entire hobby does pay attention and are indeed impressed. While the arcades were full, a museum area displayed consoles from another lifetime. There were Ataris, Intellivisions, ColecoVisions, and even an Odyssey, the first ever video game console. We heard lots of reasons why these fans prefer the old school. The games today are just really fast paced and you have to sometimes take your month just to read the manual and it's sometimes just too complicated. I like the older games better because most of them are less violent than the newer games. To me a lot more fun. Once you get those big dots you get to try to get the bad guys. It seems like the big movie productions now they're not actual games anymore. There's just no gameplay anymore. Vendors lined the hall hawking everything from old games to well old stuff and people were buying. We grew up with these video games. We used to put quarters in them. We didn't have PlayStation. We didn't have Sega and all the rest of those. So now we put them in our houses beside the pool table, and we've had friends over and having a, a get-together, and we all play pool and video games at the same time. They want to get a part of their teenage years back, so they buy a game from us. Whether buying, trading, or playing, classic gamers spent this weekend living in the past and loving it. It's all part of a big phenomenon that is really indicative of this new growing hobby that's going to be as big as baseball card collecting or stamp collecting or who knows what. And while you can earn points in Dragon's Lair, it's really one of the first games that you play less to brag about how well you did to your friends and to actually see what was going to happen next. And eventually we're going to re-experience it in 3D. Now, some game news. Times have changed for God Games, the venerable publisher of Railroad Tycoon 2 and the recent hit Max Payne. The company will relocate to the parent publisher Take-Two Interactive's New York office. CEO Mike Wilson and the majority of his staff will remain in Dallas and work on a new project, Substance TV, a DVD-based video magazine. Coming up on Extended Play, the long-awaited Max Payne has finally hit the pavement. Is this noir title all it's cracked up to be? and we exterminate some creepy crawlies in the appropriately named Extermination. That didn't sound too good. Welcome back to 
extended play at the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas. You know, this isn't all just games. The musician behind us, Seth, based his entire setup on a Commodore 64 and a music cartridge. And I can barely calculate numbers on that thing. The Max Payne has been in development for years, and during that time, all we really knew about the game was that it was going to change action gaming forever. Well, that naturally makes us quite skeptical. We were wrong. Max Payne involves a lot of shooting, and even more shooting in slow motion. No, don't shoot! No in Max Payne, you play no, no, no. Max Payne, one hard-boiled detective bent on doling out some extra-legal revenge. The game is a third-person shooter in the most pure sense. Key hunting is minimal. There is a key on the table. To make room for the blazing guns. The crux of the game is the bullet time feature that slows down action but allows for real-time aiming. This Matrix-style element may look like a gimmick but becomes necessary to master to succeed in the game. Also, it looks really cool. The graphics are a standout as well, making New York City look gritty, cold, and menacing. In addition, one doesn't need the highest-end system to make it run smoothly. The biggest problem in the game is the story. Exhibit number one, a newspaper. The over-the-top hard-boiled writing may be parodic. Less chance of innocent bystanders getting caught in the crossfire. But then again, it may not. A locked door barred my way. I needed a key. The game is also very short, but extra difficulty settings entice you back into a world that is the first truly interactive action movie. Bear in mind, though, the extreme violence doesn't make this for everyone. Extended play gives Max Payne a five out of five. Green? No, not the green. Man, one of the best things about this expo is you can buy all kinds of old games you'd never find anywhere else. That's why so many people come here. Check this out. Burger Time. I used to play this in the arcade. Cool. Now, our next game is describing itself as the first in a new genre called Panic Action. I don't know, is it something new or is it just the same old survival horror? Well, watch our review and decide for yourself. Here's Extermination. You sure this is the right way? Trust me! The end of summer sees the release of Extermination. Ah! Sony's first attempt at publishing a survival horror title. You play Dennis Riley, a U.S. Marine who has been sent to the South Pole to investigate a top-secret military base that has ceased communication for several days. I had no choice. What awaits him is a welcoming party of the meanest type, an army of mutant freaks ripped directly out of the pages of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. On the surface, Extermination might look like an innovative survival horror title that uses real-time backgrounds. But a closer inspection reveals that this game presents nothing new and even falls for the same problems that similar titles have had in the past. This includes highly sensitive control issues and the survival horror favorite, dodgy camera problems. Graphically, you get a mixed bag. While Dennis and his foes are well modeled, it's hard to get grossed out by the poorly designed polygonal corpses that litter the game. Moreover, the environments, though detailed, contribute to the game's many glitches. The same goes for the sound. The music is unimpressive and the voice acting is hardly remarkable. That didn't sound too good. Because of its inconsistent presentation, low replay value, and mediocre story, Extended Play gives Extermination a 2 out of 5. So if you're disappointed by extermination, bear this in mind. It won't be too long before you'll be playing Devil May Cry. Now, if you still have your NES and you're still trying to fight your way through some Konami games, you might appreciate this code. This is not just a code, it's the code. Still trying to figure out a way to finish Contra on the NES, but keep dying over and over again? Maybe you've forgotten the now legendary Konami code. So for the last time, here it is. On the title screen, press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and start. You'll start the game with 30 lives instead of the measly three. Coming up on Extended Play. Pac-Man's got a brand new bag. We take a look at the latest updates of classic games. 
and we spill some green alien blood in our preview of Aliens vs. Predator 2. Welcome back to Extended Play at the Classic Gaming Expo in Las Vegas. Check this out, Astro Smash on the Intellivision. Yeah, there's very little that gets more classic than the Intellivision, but what still makes this fun, along with other standards like Pac-Man and Frogger, is they still have the essential element, fun, addictive gameplay. Now, a lot of these classic games are being updated, and they're selling really well, but the question is, are these modern makeovers an improvement, or just gilding the lily? <laughs> Classic games. Who can forget the endless hours in that dank arcade or greasy pizza parlor with these technological marvels? Many developers have tried to bring these games into modern times with limited success. Okay, so who hasn't played Asteroids? Endless hours of entertainment with simple graphics and basic blast the rocks, avoid the rocks gameplay. The game was faithfully and effectively updated in Asteroids for the PlayStation. Sometimes it's best not to tweak brilliant gameplay too much, just to make it look prettier. Centipede hasn't seen its license used quite so well. An update of this classic appeared on the Dreamcast, but didn't stay totally faithful to the original. This 3D gameplay world lacked the addictive quality of the old-fashioned top-down approach. Pac-Man was the ultimate maze-going, ghost-dodging, pellet-chomping dude of the 80s. There have been a few attempts to bring this rotund yellow guy into the next generation, but none have met with much acclaim. Maybe people just don't like seeing Pac-Man jump. Many games are inspired by classics or just use the recognizable name. Battlezone was one of the best strategy games of 1998 and bore almost no resemblance to the Atari original besides being set in a tank. Sometimes good things come from using a game license. Other times, classic gameplay itself can inspire great modern games. Yep, it's time to talk Pong. This graphical marvel is the granddaddy of mass market games and its influence can be seen today. Virtua Tennis on the Dreamcast has been aptly called Pong for the new millennium. Yep, we're still just bouncing that little ball back and forth and it's still addictive. More and more classic games will be updated on next-gen consoles in the coming months. Spy Hunter will be morphed into a 3D driving shooter on the PlayStation 2. Frogger's coming back as a platformer also on the PS2. Hmm, I bet he doesn't miss those trucks much. Whether these next-gen games are able to recapture the success of the originals remains to be seen. One thing is certain, however, high-octane graphics will only get you so far. The real classic is great gameplay. You know, for some people, it's classic games like Tempest here or nothing. Now, for some weird reason, when I was growing up, only the bad kids were into Tempest. Now me, I was into Ms. Pac-Man. So what was your favorite arcade game? Email us and let us know. Now for those of you flight fans looking to be Top Gun when the Xbox rolls around, here's an early look at Air Force Delta. <laughs> Air Force Delta Storm is the Xbox sequel to the Dreamcast's Air Force Delta. In Delta Storm, you'll make your way through more than 50 missions flying for an anonymous organization. The plot, however, isn't the focus in Delta Storm. Once you're in the cockpit, it's all about the intense dogfighting. Graphically, Delta Storm looks great. You'll see lots of nice sun effects and some good explosions. You'll fly in lots of different locales. One area features a massive industrial facility tucked into the mountains, while another has you fighting in the sunset high off the coast of the tropics. Konami promises more than 80 fighters like the F-18 Hornet or F-22. The game looks like it will provide Xbox owners with arcade-style dogfighting similar to its Dreamcast predecessor. Look for the game to arrive with the Xbox launch in November. 
nice that games that were once intended for the Dreamcast are now finding their way to the Xbox. Now, uh, as you can see, this is Ghosts and Goblins, and as you may have heard, I like it a lot. Another game I liked quite a bit was the very frightening Aliens vs. Predator, but it did have several flaws. Now there's a new team at Fox Interactive working on the sequel, Aliens vs. Predator 2. Pull out the team. I will buy you as much time as I can. How will you find the Hunters, Jim? They will find me. If you enjoy the trigger twitching of Aliens vs. Predator, you can expect a similar rush from the sequel, Aliens vs. Predator 2. It will be a first-person shooter that lets you play as either one of the icky aliens or as a human marine. Like its predecessor, Aliens vs. Predator 2 will feature three different campaigns, depending on who, or more appropriately what, you play as. The alien attacks with its claws and tail, or it can bite enemies in the head. It has a couple of modes of vision, which makes it suited for lurking in the dark. It's extremely fast and can climb pretty much anywhere. The Predator is slower but heavily armed. Its close-range blade attack is gnarly, its shoulder cannon ensures annihilation, and its spear gun can make Swiss cheese out of enemies. The Predator also gets to slink around in the trees like its movie counterpart. The human marine has the all-important motion sensor as seen in the Alien movies. His combat knife is silly, but a standard-issue rifle can rip aliens apart. And if the marine gets a hold of the smart gun, he gains some serious artillery. The sequel lets you save progress at any time, which is a major improvement over the original. Watch for Aliens vs. Predator 2 lurking on store shelves later this year. Coming up on Extended Play, we try not to steer you wrong with the latest game gear. And we show you how to beat bats, alligators, and big rocks in our classic gaming strategy guide. Welcome back to Extended Play at the Classic Gaming Expo. Remember when steering wheel controllers used to look like this? Well, if you do, you're showing your age. Now, of course, they've come a really long way since their inception, and we took several of the latest out for a test drive. Racing games are a lot more fun when you've got a steering wheel controller. Now, if you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy yourself a Lamborghini Diablo, how about just getting yourself the wheel from X Technologies? This is a decent wheel. It's pretty sturdy. It's got suction cups on the bottom, buttons in all the appropriate places, pretty responsive, good grip, a good wheel overall. Now, also from X Technologies is the Ducati Course Racing Handlebars. Now, these look really cool and even accelerate in the handle, but we did find that they're a little bit loose on the turning radius. Now, this is the Blue Thunder from Interact. This is a really good wheel overall. Feels good, has a nice grip, the buttons have good action, the pedals are very good, and as an added perk, it comes with a clamp that'll either go on the edge of your coffee table or let you sit back on the couch and put it in your lap, because you know that's where you're doing the bulk of your racing game from anyway. So, you ready? Got the steering wheel, got your game, floor it. While steering wheel controllers are cool, remember that most games are designed to be used with the standard controller. So bear in mind that if you're going to avoid problems with gameplay, you'll want to adjust the sensitivity on the wheel to match your own driving style. Now, in honor of our visit to the Classic Gaming Expo, here's a look at an intro that's truly a classic, Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> You wonder what an updated version of the Ninja Gaiden intro would look like. And with updated games on the mind, you probably notice your tricks for beating the original game don't work too well with their updated counterparts. So here's a strategy guide if you're experiencing some classic frustration. <laughs> Ooh. 
Welcome to the bygone days of yesteryear, the games that started it all. Today we bring you strategies from the mother of all game consoles, the Atari 2600. First off, Adventure. You control a nameless square, now nicknamed Hero. Your mission, to save the Gold Kingdom by returning the enchanted chalice that was stolen by the nameless evil magician living in the nameless Black Kingdom. Easier said than done. You have to deal with these three infamous duck-like dragons, Yorgle, Grundle, and the fearsome red dragon, Rindle. For these devils, you'll need to find the arrow-looking sword and slay the evil dragons before they gobble you up. The black bat will be another cause of much misery and frustration. This flying rodent loves to steal objects. The best way to deal with this annoyance is to tempt the bat with an object you no longer need, or better yet, lock him up in the White Castle as to keep him out of trouble. It's also very helpful to memorize the mazes. It's very easy to find yourself at a dead end when a dragon is in hot pursuit. Learn them so you can navigate them more quickly when you're in a hurry. The invisible maze is down right, down left, left, up and over. Got it? Good. Next up, Pitfall, a fan favorite swinging onto the scene in 1982. The plot, help Pitfall Harry get all the treasure in the jungle within 20 minutes without succumbing to the seven deadly obstacles. Fire, rattlesnake, scorpions, opening marsh pit, random holes, rolling logs, alligator. Most of the obstacles are easy to avoid. Just hit that red button on the old Atari joystick and jump or swing over. Where it gets tricky is right here. See the three alligator heads sticking out ready to eat you alive? To get across, you have to jump on the alligator eyes. If you move too far over to the left, you will be chomped. Ah, yes, asteroids. Your high-tech spaceship, that's the triangle, is in a great deal of trouble having ended up right smack in the middle of an asteroid field. Now, the strategy of the game is, who are we kidding? There is no strategy. Just stay in the middle and press the little red button to annihilate the rocks before they hit you. All right, now you're ready to have some good old-fashioned fun. And for those of you who can't remember what closet your old Atari is located in, you can always download these games at atariage.com. If you want to see that strategy guide again, you can find it at extendedplay.com. Let's check this out. Kung Fu Master, new for the Atari 2600. Remote and heavily guarded, the temple is a fortress never before defeated. We'd Let's like to demons, thank the Classic dragons, Gaming Expo for hosting us here today and helping make a Kung Fu monster out of Adam here. Of the so uh, that's it for this edition of the show. Until next time, must defeat all game of these over. Guardians and more to advance to the next floor. Failure is out of the question.